Hi everyone. Welcome to round seven of the Candidates 2014 tournament. In round five and six, Anand drew his game, so he goes into round seven with a plus two score, and he's facing off against Peter Svindler. It's black to move here, and my question to you, audience, what move would you play here? I would pause your video and, and try to figure it out. All right, I'm going to show you what he did now. Uh, this is kind of a just a typical move in this type of position, and, and it's kind of good to know that. So white has a bit more space here with this pawn. It kind of restricts our pieces a little bit. Our bishop, you know, it can go here, but it doesn't do so much on that square. However, this rook, how do we get these rooks into the game? White's rook is at least on a semi-open file. Our rooks have no real scope. What we need to do here, and the best move, is f6. And now the point is, this rook is going to play along the f file. And if we take this pawn and the pawn takes back, our bishop opens up, a lot of good things can happen. White went knight to g3. And after takes, bishop takes g6. Okay, it got a little complicated with bishop g5. But my main point is in such positions, unless it seriously weakens your king, which it doesn't here, f6 is the typical move to make to kind of open lines for your rook and also to just soften up this pawn structure that white has. And it's kind of just good to know that that's the typical thing to do in such positions. And after a few moves, bishop g5 was played, rook takes. Now, black had an interesting option here that I'm actually still not sure why he didn't play it. I would pause your video now and just try to find a tactical idea for black. All right, so if you found it, if you wanted to play rook takes f2, that's the idea I'm referring to. And after king takes, queen takes e5. Actually, even turning on Houdini, like it's not so clear why uh, black rejected this. However, it, you know, because it looks okay for black. The move he played was good too. h6, bishop back, queen f7, knight h5, bishop... I mean, it's, uh, Houdini thinks it's good, but white starts to get some play. Rook e3, bishop d8, wanting to trade bishops, and now rook f3 is played. The idea is if queen takes knight, rook takes rook. And now Anand did something that may have surprised most people. Um, he certainly wasn't forced to do what he did. He could simply play a move like queen to e8 or, or something like that. But instead, he sacrificed his queen. Um, and basically, the, the compensation is a rook and bishop for a queen, but also these pawns are pretty bad. And we have the two bishops. Two bishops work quite well together. And as you're going to see, Black was able to hold this game relatively easily. a6 is a good move to stop b5. Again, to kind of make b5 harder to play. b5 is played anyway, though. And now after this, Black was accurate once again. Um, bishop c6 is a little inaccurate because he moves the queen away and brings the knight in. And it's, it's just a little annoying. Rook d7 was the best move. And if something like queen c5 now, I think bishop e7 is just fine for black, if I'm not mistaken. He went queen e4, bishop c6, and he just took this. And they agreed to a draw. So kind of interesting for a few reasons. Well, the main thing is that f6 idea. I mean, I know it's nothing mind-blowing, but it's good to know that these are... It's good to know, like, the typical moves that, like, when masters see a position, those are the first moves they look at. It's good to know that that's the, that's the moves you should be looking at. Even if you don't play it, it's good to know what's normal and the ideas that are typical. Uh, number two, that queen sacrifice that Anand played, you know, pretty interesting stuff. Um, he totally didn't have to do it, but he was able to stay solid and, you know, draw the game pretty easily. The third interesting thing was this, this bishop, uh, this rook takes f2 move. I mean, I haven't watched any interviews or anything, so I, I don't know what the reason was that he rejected it. But, you know, if you turn... Oh, sorry, it was the position before. Rook e7. But that's really weird, because... Oh, no, sorry, it's the move before, after h6. Yeah, because now rook... 
Now rook e7 doesn't work because um, queen takes g3. So as you see, Houdini thinks that black is better here. However, on the other hand, our king is running around a little bit, maybe. But we have pressure on the d d4 pawn, so hard to say. I mean, my gut tells me told me it was good for black when I was looking at the game. Uh, I'm not sure why he rejected it, because maybe he would have had maybe we even had some good winning chances there. I don't know. Probably further analysis is required because I'm sure Anand saw it. But he's very very good at chess, and he rejected it for some reason. If anyone knows, feel free to fill me in. In any case, thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you in two days with another game. Bye-bye.